Today we are editing this gray terrier mix, American Pitbull Terrier. Not sure why they listed that way. Her name is Moody. Clearly we completely lost the light with this photograph. So one thing that I did for the lighting setup is I actually had the volunteer carrying a tube light just out of frame. And that's what's creating that little bit of light that's coming in from the side there. I did have a panel light. It didn't quite, it, it was just way too much on the dog's eyes. So I turned off my panel light and actually just relied on this tube light. The ISO did get up to 1250. I was using an 85 mil lens with a one over 60, which was not actually sufficient of a shutter speed. I should have had a higher shutter speed. She was difficult to keep still. And then also with an 85 mil lens, I really shouldn't be going below one over 85, at least not handheld. I'm just not that steady. I should have been at one over 100. My settings weren't great. And we can see that this shot is actually a little bit rough. Once we zoom in here, it's pretty like there, there's a bit of motion blur here. There's a lot of stuff going on. But from this distance, it doesn't actually look that bad. We're going to try to minimize the amount of cropping that we do, but we do still need to crop. So I'm going to go ahead and press R, get into that crop tool, do a four by five, and then just make sure I frame her up properly. I'm going to go ahead and get that rule of thirds right over her mouth, bisecting her face. And for me, that looks pretty good. Perfect. So we're going to go with that and we're going to get that white balance tool. Press W to get the white picker. And then I'm just picking a white spot on her fur right on her chest. And that looks pretty good to me. Next up, I'm not sure what this is going to do, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the auto button. So yeah, when it's overly dark like that, we see that Lightroom gets a little bit too aggressive with the exposure. Now that we can see the photograph, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take that sharpening all the way down to zero. And I'm going to use the AI noise reduction. And I'm going to bring it all the way to 100. And I'm going to see how that does for this photo because we do have quite a bit of noise in this image. All right, so with that image processing, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the sharpness back and we could see it really didn't do anything for the motion blur, but we do have a much cleaner image here in the darks, so that's pretty good. It is interesting that this light is coming out purple. It's coming out purple because the white balance is based on kind of the tube light wasn't really hitting the dog's chest. So it was really just getting that color cast off of the green grass there. And so that's why we're getting so much purple out of that tube light, even though the tube light was white, because the white balance is favoring magenta strongly. But I don't necessarily mind that. Purple's kind of a nice color on this dog. So I want to keep that. I like it. All right. So now we have our image denoised. You shift W and go over to this. I'm going to do a subject mask and I'm going to do the dog contrast curve. All this does is it sets a medium contrast curve, sets texture, clarity, and dehaze to seven and sharpness is set to 17 and a little bit more contrast than I like. So I'm going to go ahead and raise the shadows a bit and lower those highlights raise the exposure of our subject a little bit. And then I'm also going to take down the saturation since the dominant color is gray in the fur there. And so every color that is presenting with a gray and white dog is mostly color cast. So that's one way that we can clean those up. That did a pretty good job. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and use this object selection brush. I'm going to grab the eye and now I'm going to add in the color again that I just took out of all the fur. I want to make sure it does stay in the eye and we do have a little bit of a yellow eye color there. So I'm just going to go ahead and warm it up a little bit. I'm going to raise the exposure as much as it will let me before it starts to look a little weird. So I think we're right about there and that black color and the eye did go away. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that black back. All right. Okay, and now I'm going to use Command E to bring this over into Photoshop. And here in Photoshop, I'm just going to use the Remove tool. I'll see how well it does to get rid of his leash here. Just going to go right over it. And it did a really good job. Go ahead and clean up right there. All right, and that's really all I want to do in Photoshop. I think her face is pretty clean. And I can get that little bit there, whatever that is. But otherwise, I think we're looking pretty good. So up close, it's a little rough, but once you get to your normal sized image, this is this is still a very usable photo. It's going to be used on the shelter's website, so it's not going to be zoomed in super close. It's mostly going to be viewed from a thumbnail sized image, really. So getting that first impression, getting that beautiful dog visible and striking, that's really what we're going for here. Now that we're back in light, we're going to use the effects tool. 
we're going to do a post crop vignette of minus 15. And then also because we used a light, we have a lot of light in the foreground. So I was actually backed against the building. So that way I would get some of that light from the building. And then I would also get that tube light lighting up the side of the face, really just fighting for as much light as possible. And consequently, that gives me this too much light in the foreground. So I'm going to go ahead and just darken it up with a linear gradient. And I'm holding shift to make sure that it's nice and level. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring down that exposure. And I can bring it down quite a bit. It's not really something that anybody notices when you bring down the exposure like that. So it's a pretty sweet deal. So actually, one thing I noticed about this photograph is my horizon, I should have corrected for it earlier. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And now I'm going to take that linear gradient and I rotate it. And I'm going to use shift to go ahead and get rid of that again. Okay. And now I'm going to use a linear gradient shift to bring it there towards the dog and then lower that exposure quite a bit. I could pretty much take it down even that far and it's not anything that you would notice necessarily unless you just saw me do it just now. So now we have that foreground darkened. We got that dark background and we have our subject really standing out of the frame. One thing I can do to make her stand out even more is I'm going to use this HSL tool. I'm going to grab the grass. I'm going to take it to the yellow and take the green to yellow. I'm going to take the yellow down to orange. And what that's doing is just taking out that distracting green color. And I'm going to do a background mask. And with that, I'm going to actually reduce the saturation of the background about there. So now what you're really focusing on is the subject of the dog. The dog doesn't have a lot of color. So taking out some of that saturation from that grass just really prevents the viewer from locking onto that background and keeps that attention right on the subject, which is really what we're looking to do. And that's your dog.